Hello, it's Andy from Keyword Insights, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use our clustering feature. Let's jump right in. Once you've logged into Keyword Insights, you can get to the clustering project in one of two ways. You can either start in the workflow, so you could jump straight to it from here, or you can find the clustering function within the uh, slide out panel bar here. Of course, you do need keywords to cluster, so make sure that you've, you've already done your keyword research. Uh, if you have gone through our suggested workflow, you can do your keyword research actually within Keyword Insights itself. And if you do that, here is one I made earlier uh, around keyword research. So for the topic of keyword research, our keyword discovery tools pulled 1,933 keywords. I could, if I'd like, cluster straight from here. So I could highlight all of the keywords and go straight to cluster from here, which means I wouldn't have to you know, download a report and re-upload it back into the back into the tool but if you want to bring keyword research from other platforms maybe your search console you you want to bring in multiple files you might just want to go straight and start from the workflow here or you might want to go either way you can click on this thing here and get to it that way anyway you need the keywords first you can do the keyword research here but you can bring in your keywords from other tools Obviously, we want to give this a project name. So in this hypothetical example, I'm going to use the keywords to make it confusing. I'm going to use the keywords around keyword research I did earlier. So let's say hypothetically, I'm a consultant for HubSpot and they want to dominate the topic of keyword research. We've done our keyword research around keyword research. So it's things like, you know, how how to do keyword research for Amazon, how to do keyword research for YouTube, how to do long tail keyword research, how to do short tail keyword research. I've got all those keywords. I've got about maybe five or 6,000 keywords. I've pulled them for various sources. So I'm gonna give it a project name and that's gonna be keyword research, HubSpot. Uh, the rankings, I'm gonna put the HubSpot domain in. Uh, and why this is really useful is we go away and check the rankings for for this domain for every single keyword in your research. So why that's good is when we give you the final report, you can easily add filters to show only the clusters that we don't already rank for or don't rank well for, and therefore highlight where your gaps in your content are. So it's a really quick way of uploading thousands of keywords and finding where the gaps are. So we would always recommend putting a ranking there if possible. Location, I'm gonna put United States. And in language, I'll keep as English for now. This setting here gets the search intent. We called it keyword context. The reason being is we want to differentiate ourselves from other tools that give you intent because intent isn't always accurate. Um, if you use a certain other tool, they would classify something like CBD oil. The intent behind CBD oil is transactional because surely if you Google CBD oil, you want to buy it, right? Well, we've called it context because if you actually look at the results of CBD oil, the context of the keyword is more informational. There's more articles like, um, is CBD oil safe? What's a safe oil uh, dosage of CBD oil? So we've differentiated ourselves by calling it context. And again, when you select this, for every keyword you upload, we'll find the intent or the context behind it. So again, if, if you combine the, the ranking with the, the intent, uh, it's, again, you can find a really easy way to put some filters on to only show the clusters that you don't rank for or don't rank well for that are informational. And that's how you can get rid of all the noise and focus on your content gaps. There are some advanced settings here. We'd recommend keeping them at the default. Um, just a quick run through. So we've got two different algorithms for you. Uh, if you click on these uh, or highlight, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you the difference between them. Basically, it really depends on your niche, but I would tend to stick to, to the ones that we've selected for you. This groups keywords based on how many results they share in common in the top 10. So by standard, we, we keep it at three. Basically, if, if a keyword shares at least three URLs in common with another keyword, we'll group them together. Of course, if you wanted to get more niche or, or you wanted like smaller clusters with more with less keywords in, you would put this up at eight or nine. Uh, what, what you're saying there is only show me the key, only group together the keywords if they're sharing eight or nine URLs in common. So really specific. And if you went down any further, you'd get bigger clusters with more keywords in. We found anything less than three is too inaccurate and anything less than five or six generally is too, um, is too focused. 
Google, you've got to remember Google likes to show variety in the results. So even if two keywords mean something very similar, Google might show a few different results based on this idea of variety. So if you make that higher, you're gonna you're gonna maybe screw with the algorithm a little bit because Google wants to show diverse results. So I'd recommend between three and five, depending on your niche. Um, and the topical clusters is where, so we need to understand two concepts. Clustering is where we've we've clustered keywords. We found keywords that have at least three URLs in common or whatever setting you set here, and we've grouped them together. Topical clusters are then when we've gone, okay, let's, we wanna cluster the clusters together. Uh, and it just makes it easier to find related clusters so that when you're planning your content, you can write all the content to do with this topical cluster first. So you can imagine a, a topical cluster is a bigger thing with little clusters in it. So you've got clusters, so you've got keywords, you've got clusters, which are groups of keywords, and you've got topical clusters, which are groups of clusters. Uh, and that's the, the hierarchy. Depending on your niche, you would set this again. Again, we'd recommend medium in general, but if you set it at, uh, if you've got a more specific niche, we would probably go high. And if you've got a broader niche, we'd go low. Basically, the reason being this uses NLP to group the clusters together. And so if if you are a sports site, you want to group all the clusters to do with um, golf together and then all the clusters to do with rugby together and all the clusters to do with football together, you, that would make sense. You put that on low. If you were just a rugby site, it wouldn't be very useful for you to group all the clusters to do with rugby together, right? Because you are a rugby site and you want to define your categories with a lot more granularity. So if you're just a rugby site, you put this high because then all the clusters to do with rugby balls would be together and all the clusters to do with rugby shirts would be together, if that makes sense. So leave it in medium as general. If the results aren't what you're after, based on what I've just said, toggle that you know to, to high, uh, to hard or to, to soft. And then you can save these settings as a preset. The reason being, if you want to run the same settings across different keywords that you upload, Maybe maybe in our example of HubSpot, I want to upload all my keyword research to do with keyword research, and then all my keyword research to do with social media advertising, and then all my keyword research to do with face uh, with um, email marketing in different in different um, projects. So you can save your presets so you don't have to keep filling all these in again. Then you click next, and we upload our files. So I'm going to upload. Uh, I did keyword research on SEMrush and Ahrefs earlier, so I'm going to upload them. So this is my SEMrush keyword research, and this is my Ahrefs keyword research. It's worth and I can upload as many CSVs as I want. It's worth noting I've done no data cleanup here. I haven't opened up the spreadsheets, and I haven't mapped the. Uh, I haven't made sure all the columns are aligned. I haven't deduplicated them. We do that all all that for you here. And then I'm going to add the keywords I actually pulled through from my keyword discovery that I did earlier. So this is my keywords here. I'm going to add those 1,933 there. Now you just need to map your, your keywords. As you can see here, we automatically clean your data. So I will map that and map the volume here. And I'm just going to choose my original keyword here. And you can see we've got 1,411 duplicate rows detected. It's going to cost this much, this is this many keywords, and it's going to take 48 minutes. And all I have to do now is click summary, just confirm what I'm after on the next screen. Just have a quick look over there, I can edit anything here, and then hit generate report. And there we go. You'll get an email with the link to your project, or you can check back on it anytime by going to either the keyword clustering and viewing recent clusters here, or you can go straight to your projects here and view the keyword clustering here. So you can see right now it's processing and these are all my old uh, projects here. So hopefully that helps, enjoy your keyword clustering. We There are more videos on how to interpret it and different ways you can use it and different case studies. Recommend checking them out as well. Cheers.